Hello everyone, this is Andre with The Best Tech. In this tutorial, we are going to learn how to create an online shopping application. This tutorial is meant for beginners to advance. And by the end of this tutorial, you master how to create beautiful UI like this using Flutter, Hive, and Provider. Without wasting time, let me introduce you to our application. So at the top, we have our title. Below that, we have our tabs. So our tabs give us the ability to navigate to different sections of the application. And right below it, we have a list view. And our list view is scrollable, so we can view the products that we have in a particular section. Underneath, we have the Let Us Show section, and we have a Show All button that we can use to see all the products in this section. And at the bottom, we have a floating navigation bar and in our navigation bar we have home search favorites cart and profile so let's move up here our show all button takes the state of our tab controller and passes it to the next page for instance we are at index one so if we click on show all we are going to be shown products related to index one let's try for the kids if you press show all, we are redirected to index two and we are shown all the products related to that particular section. And up here, we have a filter. This filter, we can use it to filter products according to gender, category, price, and brand. Our app also gives us the ability to add products to favorites. If we click here, we add to favorite and to view our favorites, we come down here and this is the product that we just added to our favorites. If you want to remove it, we can either just remove it from here or we can click again on this icon and we remove it from here. As for our cart, we can just click on a product select the size and add to cart if we click on our cart we're able to view the product that we just added to our cart so this is the product that we just added to our cart we also have an ability to delete products from the cart so if we click on this icon here we can delete products from the cart and our cart is being stored in hive storage so if we close our application and reopen our application and visit our cart our products are still there because they are being saved in hive storage so this is what our app looks like now. So first off, we need to create a text object which can make us easily change the font size, font color, and font weight. So let's come up to the views folder. In the shared folder, create a new file and call it app style. You can call it whatever you want, but for me, I'm just going to call it app style. In the app style, we need to create a text style object, app style and it's going to return return google phones and for this application we are going to use poppins we need to import the material package here so first we need to have the size we need the color we need the font weight in mine here i'm just going to call it fw down here we need font size and we pass the size over here we need color and we pass color we need font weight and we pass fw so we are done creating our, our app style. So let's come up to the main screen. In the main screen, we need to replace this text style with the one that we just created now. So we delete this code here and we use app style. Let's have 40 colors.black and font weights. We're going to make it bold. So we have an error. This error is being caused by this constant here. So we need to delete it. So let's save our application and see the changes. So our app style is working fine. So next, we need to create the, the bottom navigation bar. So first, we need to change the background color for our scaffold. Scaffold comes with a property called background color. And we are going to use an off-white color for our scaffold background. And we need to pass const here to get rid of the error. Underneath, we need to create the bottom navigation bar. Bottom navigation bar takes a widget and the widget that we are going to use is safe area. Safe area ensures that the app's content is always visible to the user regardless of the device they are using. In the child, we are going to pass padding. Our padding is going to be eight here. Padding takes a child and in this child, we are going to retain a container. 
A container is used to create a box that can be decorated using the decoration property. And we can also manipulate the size of the box. So first, we need to add padding. We're going to add a padding of 12. We're going to add margin. In the margin, we're going to have edge inserts. And we are going to manipulate the horizontal side of it only. We're going to have to pass 10 here. Now we need to manipulate this style of our container. Here we need to put decoration and have a decoration box. Box decoration here. In the box decoration, we're going to pass the color and the color for our bottom bottom navigation bar is going to be black. So colors dot black. To ensure that our bottom navigation bar has rounded corners, we are going to use a property of the decoration box called border radius. Radius dot circular and the, our value is going to be 16 here. So a container takes a child and the chart that we're going to pass is a row. A row is used to create horizontal layout of its children. And our main axis alignment is going to be main axis alignment dot space between. We're going to use space between so that we can position the children from the beginning to the end of the row, leaving some spaces in between. A row retains a property called children. And in our children, we are going to pass a size box. Size box has a property called height. So our height is going to be 36. And we are going to pass a width of the same size, 36. So now we need to wrap our size box with a gesture detector. So a gesture detector detects various gestures such as tap, drag, and scale. We're going to have on tap. We're going to use on tap here. It's going to be empty at first. So now let's get rid of the, the areas that we have here. We are going to add const everywhere in the file and our errors are gone. So now we need to have a child in the size box. This child is going to be a, an icon. So we are going to use flutter vector icons. So here I'm going to use a font iron icons. We need to manipulate the color. Set it to white. So now we have our icon here. So our bottom navigation bar has five icons. So what we are going to do, we are going to extract this widget. I'm going to call this widget bottom knob. I'm going to duplicate it. So now we have our five icons down here. So we need to create a new file for this widget. So I'm going to cut it from here and create a new, a new file in the shed. And I'll call it bottom, bottom nav widget or dart. We need to pass the material, the material package. And here on top, we need to pass, we need to make finals so that we can use them in our widget. First one, and the second one is going to be an icon.
So here we need to pass this icon. And remove the const. On the gesture detector, we need to pass the, the on tab, the on tab function. So our bottom nav widget looks fine. So let's go to our main screen. In our main screen, we need to pass on tab. And we also need an icon. So we need to duplicate our bottom nav widget four times again. So now we need to use icons that suits our pages. So on home, I'm going to change the icon. I'm going to use a font called Material Community Icons. And I'm going to use home. The second icon is going to be search. The third icon, we're going to have Add. we're going to have our cart over here and we're going to have our profile so we're going to use the person widget so our icons have changed here so now let's move our body to the top between the background color and the bottom navigation bar so we are going to cut it from here and paste it right in between we don't need this center anymore we're going to replace it with a list of widgets with the name page list and in here the page list is going to have a page index so we need to create these two so first let's create the page index So we are going to set up the page index temporarily before we jump into provider. So it's going to be an integer and the initial value is zero. And we need to create this page list. We create the list. It's going to be of type widgets with the name page lists. And right on top here, we need to remove the cons. So in here, we are going to put our pages, the pages that we are going to be iterating through in our home, in our bottom navigation bar. So we need home, search, and this one is also going to be home. We need cart and we need profile. So we come to our, our folders, our view, I've created the, the files already, but they're empty. So let me create the first one. The first one, we're going to have a, a stateful widget, and I'm going to call it home page. We need to import the material package. And in here, we're going to return a scaffold. In this scaffold, we're going to have the body and we're going to use a center. In the center, we're going to return a child. In the child, we're going to use a text, text widget. And we're going to just write home. Oh, this is home. 
and we need to style it a little bit so we need to put our style here we are going to use our app style that we've created before size we are going to use 40 it's going to be of color black and it's going to be bold so right here I'm just going to to copy the scaffold and we go on to our next page the search page we're also going to create a stateful widget with the name search page and in here I'm going to to paste this cover that I just copied top here we need to return the material package and we need to import the app style let's do it for all our pages here state for widget call it profile we need to import the material package and replace here we need to import our app style let's do it for our cut page we import our material package here we also replace with our scaffold and import our app style so now we need to go and put these pages in our pages list here so our first our first page is going to be to be the home page our second page is going to be the search page our third page I'm going to rewrite the home page and our fourth is going to be the card our fifth page is going to be the profile so to get rid of this error over here we have to add const on top and now we need to test our pages the pages that we have in our UI the pages that we are going to use in our bottom navigation bar so I'm going to change the index manually because we don't have providers yet so next what I need you to do is to go to our lib folder and go to controllers create a new file name it main screen provider in the main screen we have a class called main screen notifier which extends change notifier this class is responsible for state management using the provider package it manages page index state and notifies all listeners whenever there is a change in the state other parts of the application then can use this date to update UI accordingly so in the main screen notifier we are going to declare a private variable of type int with the name page index and initially it's going to be zero we also need a getter method to retrieve the value of the page index
we also need a setter method that we are going to use to set the value of the page index. It is going to require an integer, the name new index. And in this method, we're going to set our page index to new index. This method also requires another method called notify listener. So a notify listener method is called to notify all listeners of the state changes. This is useful when you want to update the UI and whenever the state of the page index change. So to use our providers, since we are going to use more than one provider, we're going to wrap my app with the multi provider widget. Multi provider widget comes with a property called providers. Providers is a list of providers that we are going to use in the application. So, so far we've created one provider and it's of type change notifier provider. Here we're going to pass the context. And we are going to write the name of the provider. And the name of our provider is main screen provider, main screen notifier. So now we want to use our provider in our main screen. So let's go to our main screen. In our main screen, we need to wrap the scaffold in a consumer widget. So I'm going to cut this code here. And return a consumer widget. In here, we have to specify the notify object that the consumer should listen to. And in our case, we are going to listen to main screen notifier. Don't forget to to import the provider package. Down here we have the builder. So the builder function specifies how the UI should rebuild when changes occur. We're going to paste our scaffold here and remove the dead code. Down here, we are going to close. Here, I'm going to change from my type to a name that is closer to our, our notifier. And don't forget to put it as a small letter here. So now we need to make changes to our code to use providers. First, we need to remove the initial page index that we set when we were testing the application. So in the page index, we are getting the page index from the provider. And in here, in the on tab function, we are going to set the index. So we are going to use setters from our provider to set the new index. I'm going to duplicate this code and then just change the indices.
so now let's check and see whether our bottom navigation bar is working. Our bottom navigation bar is working. I've made an additional change down here to differentiate the icons, the selected icon from unselected icons. We need to check if page index is zero, if the selected page index is zero, then we need to show this icon else we are going to show home outlined icon on the second one probably no change but you can make a change if you want on the third one if the index is two we're going to show the add icon else we're going to show the add circle outlined so we we did the same for for the last two so to maintain few lines of code in our scaffold, we're going to extract the bottom navigation bar to a separate widget. I'm going to call it bottom nav. So we need to cut this code from here and put it in a separate, in a separate page. So go to views, shared, and create a new file, call it bottom nav, and paste the code. So first we need to import the material package. Next, we need to import this bottom nav widget. We also need to import the flutter vector package. So to use provider here, we need to wrap our safe area in a consumer widget. So we're going to do, to do the same process that we did before. I'm going to cut this code from here. The notifier object that we're going to listen to is the same main screen, main screen notifier. And don't forget to import the provider package. Down here, we need to rename. And we need to return our self error. And we need to, to close the code here. So now let's go to our main screen. We need to import our widget. And don't forget to add const here. So let's try and see whether it's working or not. So our extracted widget is working fine. So next we're going to work on our home screen. So first, before we start working on our home page, let's take a look at our application and see what it looks like. Right here on top, we have the title and we have the tabs. We have this design and we have a list view. We have a row and we have another list view here. So let's bring up our application. So our body is going to return a size box. And this size box is going to have a height. For height, we are going to use media query and it's going to take up the whole space of the screen. So a size box has a property child and in the child, we're going to return a stack, a stack widget. So a stack widget allows us to position widgets on top of each other. A stack widget has a property, children. So our first widget in the children is going to be a container. This container is going to have a padding. From the left, we're going to put 16. From the top, we're going to put 45. From the right is going to be zero. And from the bottom is going to be zero. We're also going to use height. And for height, we are going to use media query also. 
and we're going to take up a height of 0 0.4. So we have to multiply by 0 0.4. We also need decoration. And here we have box decoration. In the box decoration, we're going to pass an image and a decoration image. And we are going to use an asset image. And it's coming from our assets folder. So we have to put our, our path here. Assets, images. And the image that we are going to use is topimage.png. So I'm going to copy the name from here. Don't forget to put the extension. So our image has a property called fit. And our fit is going to be boxfit.fill. Okay, so this is our design. So next, we are going to add our title. So our container comes with a property child. So in our child, we are going to put a column. So a column is a widget that allows us to arrange widgets in the vertical axis. And it has a property called cross axis alignment. And our cross axis alignment is going to be from the start. So a column has a property children. In the children, we are going to have a text widget. So first we need to add our titles here. Next we need to add style. However, we are going to use a different style. So we are going to go to our app style in our shared app style and create a new textile object. We need to manipulate the height of the, of the text. So we are going to create a new one with height. So I'm just going to call it app style with HT and it's going to require a double with the name HT. Down here, it's going to be height and we pass the HT down here. Then we save. Coming here, now we need to use our app style with height. Our size is going to be 42. Our color is going to be white. And our height is going to be 1.5. Here, we need to change our height to 1.2. So it looks like our image is not filling the screen on the width. So what we need to do, we need to come up here, we wrap our column with the size box. And we give the size box width. And for the width, we are going to use media query. Okay, so next we're going to work on our tabs. So before we start working on our tabs, we need to change this size box into a container. Our container comes with, with a padding. We need to add a little bit of padding to our title. So we're going to manipulate the left side 
And we're going to put a padding of 8. And we're also going to manipulate the bottom side. And we're going to put a padding of 15. And on top, we need to include a few lines of cord. So I'm just going to write them. We need to declare our tab controller. The length of our tab controller is going to be 3. And in VSync, we're going to pass this. VSync is set to this, meaning that the home state will provide the object, the VSync object, to the controller. So next, we're going to add our tabs into our scaffold. So in order to use tabs, we need a tab bar. A tab bar widget displays horizontal row of tabs. And we also need a tab bar view. So first we are going to work with our tab bar. So our tab bar has a property tabs. It takes a list of tabs. So we are going to have three tabs. A tab takes text and it's going to be a string. So the first tab that we have is main shoes. We're just going to duplicate it and then we rename the other tabs. We also need some other properties from the tab bar. So the first property that we are going to use is the tab bar indicator size. We also need indicator color. Our color, we are going to put it as a transparent color. We also need a controller, and our controller is the tab controller. So our tab, our tab bar is crawlable. So we're going to set is crawlable to true. And our label color, that's the color of the tab, the text, the text of our tab is going to be colors.white. The label style we need to manipulate the font of the label so here we're going to pass app style the size is going to be 24 the color is going to be white and it's going to be bold here We also need to differentiate selected tab from unselected tab. So here we're going to pass unselected label color. Let's put colors dot gray. And we're going to make it a little bit transparent. So we need to, to use with opacity. And I'm going to set this one to 0 0.3. So 
So now we need to work on our table view. So first in here, we need to pass the controller. Next, we need to put the children. So we need three children since we have, we have three tabs here. So our first child is going to be a column and a column has a property children and in the children first we're going to pass a container and this container we are going to require height and it's going to be 0 0.4 0.5 and we also need to add the color so in the beginning we need to see whether our tabs are working or not so we just add the color later on we'll add the code so that we can display the widgets that we want to display so let's duplicate this column So it's working here. We need to add padding to our table view. So we come up here, we wrap it in a padding. So we are going to add, we're going to add, we're going to add a padding of agencies dot only. We want to manipulate the top part of it. Here we are going to use media query. And we're going to multiply it by 0 0.265. So we need to get rid of this cons over here. And let's bring our, our padding down. Let's bring it down here. So our tab bar is not visible. So we need to move it from here to this column. So we are going to put it inside here. Now it's visible. So to see the changes when we scroll through our tabs, we're just going to change the colors here. So in our container, so in our column, we need to add another column. And we need children in here. So the first child that we're going to have is a text. Let's add a little bit of style to it. So we're going to use our app style. Our size is going to be 24. Our color is going to be black and we have to make it bold. So we need the show all button. So we are going to put a row. In this row, we need children. The first child is going to be a text. Let's add some style to it. So this row we have to add main axis alignment. So now we need to add an icon here. I'm going to use the font and design. 
and the size of the icon is going to be 20. So in this column, we also need to add another size box. with the height of media query zero point one five. Let's put it as a container first so that we can we can see the color. Let's come to our table view. Let's wrap it into a container. And in this container, we want to use the padding property. And we're going to give our container an agencies dot only, and we want to manipulate the left side of it. And we're going to put a padding of 12. And let's come to our first child in our column. Let's rename it into a size box. Let's remove this color from here. And we want to use the child property. In, the, in this child property, we are going to use a list view builder. So a list view builder comes with a property called item count. So since we don't have our data yet, I'm going to put a random number, six. And our list view builder is going to be scrollable. So we want to set the scroll direction to axis dot horizontal. And in here, in our item builder, we have to pass the context. and the index. So we have to retain something here. Since we don't have our product card, first we are going to retain a container. And in this container, we have to set the color. Let's give it a color. We need height and we need width. And our width here has to be 0 0.6. Let's close this container. We have to wrap this container in a padding. So now let's go to our second child and let's go to this row here and let's wrap this row in a padding. And we want to have a padding from So the first value is 12, the second is going to be 20, the third value is going to be 12, and the last value is going to be 20. So now let's visit this container here, and we have to make it a size box. Let's get rid of the color. Let's reduce the size a little bit here. And we have to use the child property in here. So we need to retain a list view. So we are going to go up and copy this list view that we just created here.
and we are going to paste it in here. And in this list view, we need to change the height and the width. So our height is going to be multiplied by 0 0.12 and our width is going to be 0 0.28. So let's remove our color from here. And in our container, we want to add a decoration. First, let's paste the color. And in our decoration, we had to add border radius, border radius dot all, and radius dot circular, and our value is going to be 16. In our container, let's add a child, and we're going to use a cache network image. Cache network image requires a URL. So since we don't have our data yet, let's go to our, our JSON file and just copy one URL and paste it in here. Let's move it down. Now let's change this color to white and in our decoration we have to add another property box shadow. Box shadow takes a list. So here we're going to return box shadow and our color is going to be color dot black. We are going to give it a spread radius of one and we are going to blur it a little bit. So here we give a value of 0 0.8 and we have to give it an offset. Let's change the color here to 38. Let's close this size box, we'll revisit it later. Let's go up. We need to get rid of this container here with our product card. So first, let's go to our, our views, shared, and create a new file and call it product card. So first, let's import material. Let's create a stateful widget and we call it product card. Down here, let's return a padding. So padding takes a padding. From the left, it's going to be eight. From the top, it's going to be zero. From the right, it's going to be 20. And from the bottom, it's going to be zero. Our padding also comes with a child property. So this child is going to return a clip rect. A clip rect allows us to add border radius to, to our widgets. So we need border radius here. Dot secular. And we are going to maintain a radius of 16. Clip rect also has a child property and in the child we are going to return a container. In this container we are going to give it a height. We also need to use width And we are going to multiply it by 0 0.6. And in this container, we need to use decoration. So we need box decoration. In the box decoration, we need box shadow.
box shadow takes a list. So in this list, we're going to return box shadow and we're going to give it a color. Spread is going to be one. Blend radius is going to be 0 0.6 and our offset is going to be one over here and we're going to put one over here. So our container is a child. So in this child, we're going to return a color. Column returns children. Let's go up. We need to add cross axis alignment. X alignment is going to be start. And in our children down here, we are going to return a stack. Stack also has a property, children, and in the children, we're going to return a container and we have to give a height so our height is going to be 0 0.23 and we need decoration and in our decoration we're going to add an image so here we have the property decoration image our image is going to be a network image so in here we need to return a URL so we're going to let's write image here we'll revisit this error and fix it a stack has a position widget we need to position some widgets on top of our on top of our container So first, on the right, and our child is going to return a gesture detector. Let's set it to now for now. Here, let's pass a child, and our child is going to be an icon. And we're going to use the font Material Community. So down here, outside of our stack, we need to add a padding. And we need to manipulate the left side of it. And we're going to add a padding of 8. Our padding returns a child. And in the child, we are going to use a color. In the color, we're going to add cross axis alignment. And it's going to be cross axis alignment dot start. We're going to use the children property. 
And in the children, we're going to return a text widget and we need to add style. Let's utilize our app style. App style with height. And our font is going to be 36. And our height is going to be 1.1. Let's copy the text and paste it here. So here, we need to add category. Let's space it up a little bit so that it can be visible. Let's go to the top here. We need to add the properties that we need to use. So first we need string price. We need a final string category. ID. We need a name and we also need an image. So here in our network image, it has to be widget dot image. Let's bring our application up. Here, this is the widget that we're working on. So here we need to change the size to 18 and we need to change the color to gray. We need to change our height to 1.5. And down here in the same column, not in the same column, let's close this column, but outside of this padding, we need to add another padding. We're going to manipulate the left side. We're going to give it an eight. And the right side, we're going to give it an eight. And we're going to use the child property. And in the child, we have to pass a row for the price and the colors. In our row, our main axis alignment is going to be main axis alignment dot space between. So let's utilize the children property. In our children, we're going to return the text for the price. And our price is going to be widget dot price. And we need to add style. Style, we're going to utilize F style. And our size is going to be 30. And our color is going to be black. Our font weight is going to be W600. We need to add another row, the colors text and the colors. Let's utilize children. In the children, we're going to have a text. Let's give it an app style. And the size is going to be 18. The color is going to be gray. Here, our font weight is going to be W500. In our row widget, we need to space the colors and the other widgets, so we need a size box. Let's add a width, 
and we're going to set the value to 5. And down here, we need to use a choice here. And our label property takes a string. So we are going to give it an empty string. The selected property takes a boolean. So we need to go up here and create a boolean value. It also comes with a property visual density. Our visual density is going to be visual density dot compact. And our select color is going to be colors dot black. So we are done with this widget. Later on, we're going to replace this choice chip with a raw widget. But for now, it's good like this. Let's add cons here and everywhere else in the file. So our product, product card is done. Next, we are going to hook it up to our, to our home page. We need to remove this gray color underneath our bottom navigation bar. So let's go to our main screen. And we're going to cut this color from here. And we need to apply it in our home page. So we are going to give it as our scaffold background. Let's go to our first widget in the table view. And let's go to this size box here. Let's change this color from black to, to white. Let's remove this padding over here. And we need to return our, our product card. So first, we're going to set some, some random numbers. requires a string. And for our image, we need to do the same as we did for the other, for the other widget down here. So we just need to revisit our, our JSON and get a URL from there. Let's add a dollar sign here. So to add a dollar sign, we need to add a backslash first. Let's add const here. So let's take a look at our application. Down here, we have a white color. We need to make our application uniform. All the colors. This gray has to match this one. So what we are going to do, we are going to visit our main screen. So let's go to views UI main screen. And we need to give a scaffold background color. 
now our application is uniform and one other thing our tab bar here we need to add a padding so let's visit our our home and let's go to our tab bar and here we're going to add a padding and we're going to set edges as zero so next we want to create our models so let's go to our json file let's open our json file so first we need to copy one product here after we copy one product we need to open google chrome or any internet browser so first we need to put a list and we need to paste our code here we need to remove comma and in here this is our model make sure that your language is selected to dot and the now safety is on all properties are required and all properties are final so next you copy the code and go back to your to your editor so in our editor what we need to do we need to go to our lib folder in our lib folder let's go to models we need to create a new file and we're going to call it sneakers model we need to paste the code in here we're going to get rid of first five lines next we come to this list size we need to change it from list size to list dynamic down here we need to change this part also and we need to get rid of this part and we're just going to put x here and let's go down here we don't need this code here so we are going to delete it and we don't need this class here we're going to get rid of it so let's see we have an error we don't need this method here we're going to get rid of it too so our models are done next we are going to create we're going to come to our services folder and we're going to create a new file and we're going to call it helper in this helper we're going to create a class in a reward scenario this class is used to retrieve data from an API but since we don't have an API in this application we are going to use it to retain data from a JSON file first we need to import the root bundle from the Flutter services and we are going to give it a desired name in this case I'm going to give it a name the bundle so in here we are going to create a method and it's going to return a future list of sneakers and let's give it a name so first we're going to get mail sneakers and it has to be asynchronous in here we need to create a final data and it's going to await the data from the root bundle and we need to load data from our JSON file so we are going to use load string and the key of this load string is going to be a string and our string is the path of our JSON file so let's come up here our JSON file is located in the assets folder 
in the JSON folder. So first we are going to get mail sneakers and to avoid any mistakes, I'm going to copy the name from here. And I'm going to paste it here. And don't forget to put the extension and our extension is JSON. Down here, we need to create a final, a final list of our sneakers. And we are going to use the sneakers from JSON method and we are going to pass this data in here. So to get rid of this error, we need to return our list here. So down here, we return our mail list. And we are going to do the same for our other JSON files. So we have two JSON files remain, one for the kids and one for the women's shoes. So I'm going to replicate this code here. So we need to name our method here. So first I'm going to get the female sneakers. And you can rename this list here to female. So let's create one for the kids. Let's cross check our name, it's kids shoes. It's correct here. We need to rename it to kids shoes. To get a single sneaker from our list, we need to copy this method here. It makes some few changes. So we're going to paste it here. So the first thing that we need to do, we need to remove this list from here so that we can just return sneakers. And we need to change the name. Let's just say by ID. And in here, we need to pass a parameter. So we are going to pass the ID. And everything up here remains the same. Down here, we need to create a new final. Let's call it sneaker. And in here, we are going to use our list. And we are going to get one file from our list. So sneaker has a property ID. So this ID has to be equal to, to the ID here. So let's pass the ID down here. And down here, we need to remove this and we need to pass our single sneaker. Okay. So we're going to replicate these two times for our other JSON files. So we have female everything here remains the same. We need to change the name here. So this is okay. And we need to make one for the kids.
let's change the name here everything remains the same and we need to change the location of the JSON file to the right JSON file so we are done retrieving our data from a JSON file so to retrieve data from our helper class we need to first declare a late future list maker variable here And this list is going to be of snakers. And we are going to give it a name. So the first one, we are going to retrieve mail. And it has to be a private variable. So let's come up here. It's supposed to be snakers. And we need to create a method to get this data. So in our method, we need to, to call our helper function. So first we need to get mail snakers. So after creating our method, we need to initialize. So we're going to pass our, our method in our init state. So this variable is going to be later used in our future builder. So we are going to create two more, two more methods, one for the women and one for the kids. So let's call this female. And we need one for the kids. We also need to initialize these two, two methods. Let's rename these two. So this one is going to be female. And this one is going to be kids. Let's go to the top and create variables. So we are going to use these variables in a future builder. Our future builder is going to be here. We're going to wrap this list view builder in a future builder. So first what we need to do, we need to cut this code from here. So we need to create a future builder. And our future builder has to take an object of future and it's going to be of type list snickers. And down here, we need to pass a future and we pass our variable that we created. So first we are going to take the mail and in our builder, we're going to put the context and the snapshot. We need to check the state. So we are going to use an if statement. So if it is waiting, we're going to return a circular progress indicator. Here, else if it has error, we're going to return a text widget. So else, if our snapshot has data, we're going to create an instance of our data and we're going to call it mail. And then we return our list view builder. So let's format our code a little bit. So now let's pass this variable down here we need the length. So first, we're going to check the now safety. And down here, we have to create a final of name shoe. 
and it's going to be snapshot.data and here we need to access the index and let's close it here so we need to change our data here from this random data that we assigned it first so for our price our price is going to be shoe dot price so we have an error so first what we need to do we need to remove this const from here and for our category it's going to be shoe dot category and we do the same for the id so here so we are going to take the first item in the so let's restart our application. So our data has loaded successfully. Now we're waiting for the image to, to show up. So now we need to put a dollar sign on our price. To do that, we're going to wrap it in a string, wrap it in brackets. We come here, we put a dollar sign, and put a backslash here. We put another dollar sign. This dollar sign has to be so our product card is done. Let's come down here to this size box. So first we need to retrieve, we need to extract this container from here. So what we are going to do, extract, we're going to call it new shoes. Let's cut it from here and create a new file for it. So let's go to views, shared, and we create a new file. We call it new issues. Let's paste our code in our new file. Let's import the material package in here first. Next, let's import the cache network image. And we want to remove this string from here let's come to the top we should create a final string and it's going to be of name image url so here let's go up we need to copy our future builder. We're just going to return images. So we're going to replace this list view builder with our future builder. So let's come down here. Our return value over here has to be our new widget that we just created let's import it here and we have to pass a parameter Since our image URL is a list, we're going to, to get the second picture from that list. So let's give it a padding here. Worked on this tab only. To make our work lighter, what we are going to do, we are going to extract this first column here. So let's extract this widget and call it home widget. So let's just cut it from here and create a new file for it. Let's go to views, shared, new file, and we call it home widget. 
and let's paste our code in here. So let's import necessary packages in here. So we have all the necessary packages. Let's go back to our home page. In our home page, let's import our newly created widget. So what we need to do here, we need to copy this widget from here and we need to replace these two columns. Let's format our code. So here we have a future list sneakers. So let's try to pass females. And we pass one for the kids here. And let's go to the top. Let's get rid of this unused code. So let's try and see whether our widgets are working or not. So our tabs are working fine. This one is for women. Let's check and see for the kids. For the kids it's working also. So next we need to work on this gesture detector button and then we work on our, our latest product page. Now that we're done creating our home page, let's go to our lib folder. And in our lib folder, let's visit the views and go to our UI. In our UI, let's create a new file and call it product by cart. And in this new file, we have to create a stateful widget and give it a name. Let's import the material package down here, our stateful widget has to return a scaffold. And in the scaffold, we have to utilize the body property. And our body is going to be a size box. And in this size box, we are going to utilize the height. Our size box also comes with a child property. And our child is going to be a stack widget. In our stack, we have to use the children property. And our first child is going to be a container. After creating the container, let's go to our home page. And in our home page, we have to come up here and copy the code from here. And let's paste it in here. To view the changes that we are making, we are going to temporarily hook this page up in our main screen. So let's go to our UI folder, main screen, and we are going to put it up here. So this is what our page looks like now. So we need to make a change. We need to change the background color of the scaffold. So let's revisit our page. Here, scaffold, we have to use the background color. And let's go to our home screen. Let's copy the background color from here. So let's go to our container. Our container retains a child. And our child is going to be a column. In our column, we're going to utilize cross-axis alignment. Let's give children here. Our first child is going to be a padding. So from the left, we're going to give it a padding of six. Top, we're going to give it a padding of 12. Right, we're going to give it a padding of 16. And from the bottom, we're going to give it a padding of 18. Our padding also comes with a child property. So we want to utilize it. And our child has to be a row. In our row, let's use main axis alignment. Let's take a look at our design. We need two icons 
positioned end to end. So here we're going to require children and the first child is going to be a gesture detector. In this gesture detector, we're going to use on tip function and we're going to require a child and our child has to be an icon. And in this icon, we're going to use the font and design and the icon that we're looking for is close. We have to give it a color and it has to be white. In our on tip function, we are going to use navigator.pop so let's copy this gesture detector here and paste it down here so we need to change this icon here the font that we're going to use is font awesome and from font awesome we require to use a sliders icon and it has to be white so let's close this application and bring our application up. So we have our two icons. So let's go to our second gesture detector and remove this code from here. We're going to work on the code later on. Next, we need our tab controller. So our tab controller is going to be the same as the one in our home page. So we need to come up here, copy this code from width, and we need to paste it up here. Our tab controller requires a, a tab bar and our tab bar is the same as the one in our home page. So let's come to our home page and we are going to copy this tab bar. Let's import the app style. Tab bar requires us to have a tab bar view. So we are going to have a tab bar view and the children of our tab bar view we are going to create three containers. Let's give it a color and a height. Let's copy this container and duplicate it two times. Seems like we have an error, so let's go and see. So here, let's come to our table view. It seems like we forgot to import the controller. So we need the controller here. Our controller is going to be a, a tab controller. Let's save and restart our application. So our tabs are working. Our tab bar view is overlaying everything. So we need to wrap it up in a padding. So we come down here, put it in a padding. So we are going to manipulate the top. So in here, we're going to use media query and we are going to multiply it by 0 0.2. Let's remove the cons from here. Let's remove an extra bracket here. We need to add left padding also, and we give it a padding of 16, and our right padding, we give it a padding of 12. It looks like our tab bar is in the wrong position, so let's see what we did wrong. So let's cut our tab bar from here and place it in this column. So now we need to work on the content of our, our table view. Our table view is going to retain a staggered grid view. So we are going to replace these containers with a staggered grid view. So first, let's look at our application here. So a staggered grid view gives us the ability to manipulate the size of the tile using indices. For example, this tile is smaller than this tile. So what we are going to do, we are going to create these tiles first before we create the staggered grid view. So let's go to our lib folder. Let's go to views. In shared, let's create a new file and call it stagger tile. It seems like I created the file already. So the file is here. So in here, we're going to create a stateful widget and let's call it stagger tile. Let's import the material package. And in our container, we're going to require decoration. Here we need box decoration. In our box decoration, we're going to utilize the color and our color is going to be white. We also need border radius. 
here is going to be dot circular and we're going to maintain 16. So our container has a property child. In our child, we're going to return a padding. And our padding is going to be a gene says dot o and the value is eight. A padding has a property child and in this child, we're going to return a column. This column, we're going to give it a main axis alignment. So to have our column content to start from the left, we are going to need cross axis alignment. And we are going to utilize the children property. And our first child is going to be a network caged image. And our cached network image is a property fit. Property is going to return box fit dot fill. This image URL is going to be our parameter on top. So let's add widget here. Let's add the parameter. So it's going to be a string. So our next widget is going to be a container. In this container, we're going to utilize the padding property. And we're going to manipulate the top. Let's give it a padding of 12. We also need to utilize height from our container. And we're going to give it a height of 70. Let's use our child property. And we're going to return a column. In this column, let's set main axis alignment. Let's add our children. So our first child is going to be a text. And let's add style to our text. The size is going to be 20. Our color is going to be colors.black. And our font weight is going to be W700. Here we need to add the price. It is going to be of the same size, but we need to reduce the font weight to W500. So first, let's change this app style to app style with height. Let's give it a height of one. Let's bring it down. We're going to do the same for this widget too. Next, let's create our parameters on top. They're both strings. So we have name and we have price. Let's add them here. So we are done creating our tile. Next, we are going to create our stack grid view. Done creating our tile. First, we need the data that we are going to pass to the stack grid view through the future builder. So let's go to our home page. From our home page, we need to copy these lines of code from here. Let's paste them here. Let's import the helper class. And let's import our models. Let's go down here to our table view. So here we need to get rid of this code. Let's go back to our home page. Let's visit our home widget. So we need to copy this code from here. This future builder. Let's paste it here. List view builder. Just take a grid view count builder. In our count builder, we're going to use the padding property. And our padding property is going to be agencies.0. We need to set the number of tiles that we are going to have in a row. So we are going to utilize cross axis count. And our number of tiles that we are going to have is 2. We need space between the tiles. So we are going to utilize cross axis spacing and our spacing is going to be 20. And we need to have spacing on our main axis. So we are going to set our main axis spacing to 16. Our scroll direction is going to be up and down. So we need to change to vertical. Let's take a grid view, takes one more property called Segatel Builder, which is a callback that takes an index and returns the Segatel widget, which determines the size, the size of the tile that is at that index. So in our code here, if the index is even, the tile will return a one by one. Otherwise, it will return a two by two. The height is also determined by based on index. If the index is one or three modular four, the height will be set to 35% here. Otherwise, it will be set to 30% of the height, the tile. 
So first we need to set our image URL and it's coming from shoot. And here we need to pass the index. So let's just say one. Our image URL here is returning a list list string. So we need to select one image from that list string and our name here is going to be shoe dots and our price is going to be shoe dot price. So let's try to run our app and it's running, but we have a bottom overlay over here. So let's find out what's the problem. So let's come here to our stagger tile and let's try to change the height to 75. Okay, so our error is gone and let's come back to our, our product by cart. In our product by cart, we need to add a dollar sign to our price. And then we add a backslash here. We want to change this from 0 0.2 to 0 0.175. And we need to get rid of this sharp edge. We need to give it a border radius. So we are going to wrap our table view in a clip rect. And we are going to give it a border radius of 16. So let's try it out. So now when we scroll, we don't see the edges here. Even below here, we don't see the edges when we scroll. So next, we are going to fix all the tabs because here we still have that green screen. So what we are going to do, let's close this future builder here. We're going to extract the widget here and let's call it male lettuce shoes. Let's just call it lettuce. So let's copy it from here, cut it in fact, and let's create a new file in our lib, shared. Let's paste it here. In here, let's import our material package. Let's import our models. Let's import staggered grid view and we need our stagger tile. So in here, let's import this widget. So we need to duplicate it and replace the second container and the third container. So in here, we're going to pass an instance of female and down here, we're going to pass kids. So we have our female shoes and we have our kids shoes here. Let's add cons over here. So we are done with this section. Next, we're going to work on the filter. So now we need to work on our filter. Down here, we need to create a filter dynamic of the name filter. And it's going to return a show model bottom sheet. Our builder is going to require context. And down here, we need to pass a container. So let's come back here on top. So our bottom sheet come with the property is scroll controlled. We're going to set it to true. The background color, we're going to set it to colors not transparent. And the barrier color, we're going to set it to colors dot white 54. So let's come down to our container. In our container, we need to utilize the height property. Our height is going to be of media query. And we are going to give it a height of 82%. And we need to pass decoration. Decoration retains box decoration. In our box decoration, we need to set the color. Our color is going to be colors.white and we need to utilize the border radius. Here we're going to use border radius dot only. So we need to manipulate top left and top right. So the first one is top left radius dot circular and we are going to give it a radius of 25. Let's copy this code here and paste it down here. We need to change the side. We need to utilize the child property in the container and our child is going to be a column. In our column, we need to utilize the children property. So our first child is going to be a size box. 
here we're going to pass height and the height is going to be 10. And we need another container. In our other container, we need a height and our height is going to be 5. We need a width and our width is going to be 40. We need to utilize decoration in here. We need to give border radius. Secular and we are going to give it a radius of 10 and we are going to give it a color and it's going to be of black 38 We need to have another child in here and it's going to be a size box and this size box we have to utilize the height and our height is going to be of media query and it has to be 70% and we need to utilize the child our child is going to be a column so in our column we're going to require a custom space widget so let's come up to our lib folder and go to shared let's create a new file and let's call it custom spacer so in here we need a set less widget. Let's give it a name, custom spacer. Let's import the material package. And down here, we need a size box. In our size box, we need to pass a height. And our height is going to be 25. Let's come up here and pass const. So we are done creating our custom spacer. Let's save it. Let's go back to our product by cart. So we need to import our custom spacer here. Let's pass const here. Next, we need a text widget. So it's going to be filter. Let's give it a style. We're going to use F style. The size is going to be 40 and the color is going to be black. And our font weight is going to be bold. Let's pass our custom spacer here. Down here, we need to pass another text widget. Let's give it a name, gender. We need a style. And our style is going to be app style. And it's going to be of size 20. And the color is going to be colors.black. And our font weight is going to be bold. Here we need to pass a size box. Let's give it a height. And the height is going to be 20. This is what our filter is going to look like when we finish programming. So let's go to our lib folder, views, shared. Let's create a new file and let's call it category BTN. In our category BTN, we have to create a stateless widget. Let's give it a name. Let's import the material package in here. Down here, we have to utilize material button let's pass the on press function and here so material button comes with the property child our child is going to be a container and in our container we need width and our width is going to be media query and our size is going to be 0 0.255 and we need to pass the decoration. Decoration retains box decoration. In our box decoration, we have to give it a border. And in our border, let's pass a width and our width is going to be one. Let's pass color and our color is going to be button color. Let's pass a style and our style is going to be border style dot solid 
still in our box decoration, we need to pass a border radius and our border radius is going to be border radius dot o and in here let's utilize radius dot circular and we have to give it a radius of nine so our container is a child property and the property that we are going to use in here is a text our text let's give it a name let's just call it a label and we need to style it a little bit we are going to utilize the app style Let's give it a size of 20. Color is going to be button color. And our font weight is going to be W600. Okay, so we need to create these parameters up here on top. We need to create a final string and let's give it a name label. Let's add these final fields here. Let's format our code. So we are done creating the category button. So let's go back to our product by cart. We need to do one thing before we continue coding. So here, seems like I made a mistake. So we need to rename this. It has to be custom, not customer. And let's go to, to our lib shared. It's here. We need to rename it to. We brought our application back here. So let's hook our filter to our slider here let's go to our gesture detector in this gesture detector let's pass the filter let's check and see how it looks it's coming out okay so let's go back to our filter underneath the size box in the same column we need to pass a row widget in our row widget we have to utilize the children property and in our children, we have to use the newly created category BTN. We need the label. And our first label is going to be man. We also need BTN color. So our button color is going to be colors.black. So let's duplicate this code here. Let's paste it two times. So let's go back to our category BTN. In our category btn this text we have to wrap it around the center widget and we have to give this container a height let's give it a height of 45. so in here let's change the label for the second let's change the color here and let's add cons here so next let's add a spacer here and we are going to add the text let's give it a style our size is going to be 20 our color is going to be colors.black and our font weight is equal to be w600 we need to move this code from here it has to be outside the row so this one is for category. So our category requires buttons. So we are going to use a row. And in row, we are going to utilize children. In our children, we are going to use the category BTN. Let's change the color of the first one to colors.black. Between the texts and the row, we need to add a size box. Let's give it a height. Down here. And after our custom spacer, we need the text. And in our texts, it's going to be price. Let's add style.
So our price app style change it from W600 to bold and down here our price require a slider. So in our slider a slider returns a value and a value is a double. So here we have created a value of type double and the initial value is 100. We'll change it later. And on change here, it takes a double of type value. And in here, let's leave it like this. Down here, let's put the active color is going to be colors.black. Inactive color is going to be colors.gray. Thumb color is going to be colors.black also. Here we need the max value. Our max value is going to be 500. And our division is going to be 50. We also need a label. So our label is going to be the value of our double that we set on top. We also need to utilize the secondary track value. Let's set it to 200. And that's all for this slider. Down here, we need to utilize the custom spacer. After the custom spacer, let's add a text. Or text, we need to use it to select brands. Here, let's add a size box. Let's give it a height of 20. And underneath here, we need we need a container and in our container we are going to give it a padding of 8 and we are going to give it a height our height is going to be of 80 let's utilize the child property and in our child property we need to return list view dot builder We're going to return a padding and in our padding and we need to utilize the child property and our child has to be a container and in this container we need decoration in our box decoration we need a color and it has to be a shade of 200 we also need to add border radius in our container, we want to retain a child, and our child is going to be image.assets. We're going to utilize the assets that we have in our folder, in our assets folder. So what we are going to do, we are going to create a list, and we give it a name, brand. So here, we need to use the index. So let's come up here on top, on item count, we have to use brand.length. So our image comes with the height property and our height is going to be 60 and our width is going to be 80. We also need a color. Our color is going to be colors.black. On top here, let's create a list. A list string and the name is going to be brand. So in here, we're going to pass our assets, dot images slash, let's paste it four times and then we put the names of our assets. So let's go to our assets folder. Let's go to images. So the first one that we have, we have Adidas. We are almost done creating our filter. Here, we have to add a little bit of height so that we can cover these tiles which are appearing from behind so let's come up here the size here let's change from 82 percent but let's bring it down a little bit let's make some few changes so that we our tape controller can be passed to the next page and go to the right index so first what we need to do we need to come up to our home widget in our home page and let's wrap it in a gesture detector. In this gesture detector, we need on tap function. And in our on tap function, we need to navigate to our product by cart. 
So here, let's go to our product by cart. In our product by cart, we are going to require a final int, let's call it tab index. So in our main, we need to unhook it from here. Let's bring our home here. So let's go back to our, our tab index here. Let's try to bring it and let's go to the top and create a new final. So let's come down here. And in our home, we need to to have our tab index also. So right here, our index is zero. Let's just pass zero. Our index is one. Let's pass one here. This is how we are going to pass our tab index to, to the next page. But if you want, you can use tab controller dot index. So let's try to restart our app and see whether it's working or not. So here we are on index zero. So we should be redirected to index zero over here. So let's go to index one. We are redirected to index one. Let's go to our index two. We are redirected to index two. So next, let's work on our product page. So now that we're done creating our product by cart, let's look at our product page right here. So this is the final design of our product page. So we are going to replicate and design something like this. So first, let's come to our lib folder views and let's go to our UI. In our UI, let's create a new file and call it product page. In the product page, we're going to create a stateful widget and let's give it a name. Let's import the material package. We are going to use a scaffold. And in our scaffold, we are going to use the body property. So our body is going to be a custom scroll view because we want to use slivers. So custom scroll view gives us the ability to use multiple slivers. Put a list of slivers here. So our design is centered around the sliver A bar. We're not going to have multiple slivers in our slivers. We're just going to have one. So let's go ahead and create it. So we are going to use a sliver A bar. So on a regular, a sliver A bar will be just work the same as an A bar, but it has an ability to be expanded. It's, it's way more flexible than an A bar. So we are going to manipulate it so that we can achieve this whole design. So here, automatic false, we're going to require leading width. And we're going to require a title. So our title takes a widget. So we're going to have a padding. And in our padding, we're going to manipulate the bottom part of it. And we're going to set a padding of 10. We're going to utilize the child property. And our child is going to be a row. So we need these two icons. That's why we are going to use a row. So our main axis alignment, since they are from end to end, we are going to use main axis alignment dot space between. And let's bring our children in here. Our children, we are going to use a gesture detector. Let's put on tap function. We're going to require a child in here. So in our child, we need to utilize an icon and the font that we are going to use, we are going to use end design. Let's duplicate this line of code down here. And for this icon here, we're going to use ellipsis horizontal. So we are done creating our, our icons here. So next, let's see our row, our padding. So we need to come up down here. We need to utilize the sliver a bar property pinned and it's going to be true. Our sliver a bar is going to be stationary, snapped is equals to false. Floating, we have to set it to true. And our background color is going to be transparent. Here, our sliver A bar comes with the property expanded height. 
in our expanded height has to take up the whole screen. So we are going to use media query. Down here, we need a flexible space. And in our flexible space, we are going to use flexible space bar. Flexible space bar takes a background. This background is a widget. So for this widget, we are going to use a stack. In our stack, first we have to utilize the children. The first child is going to be a size box. And our size box, we have to give it a height. It has to be 50% of the screen. So it's times 0 0.5. And the width is going to take up the whole screen. And in here, our child and our child is going to be a page view builder. So our images here, they're in a page view builder. So we need to, to use a page view builder here. So we need to set this scroll direction to axis dot horizontal. We need item count. So let's just put a random number for now. We need a controller, page controller. So we need to create this page controller. So let's go to the top here. We need a final with the name page controller. We need to utilize on page changed. Let's rename this value to page. So in here, we are going to use a provider. So we'll set it up later in our item builder. We need the context and we need an int index. And in here, we are going to return. We need to return a stake because we need this image and we need this icon to be to be on top of the image. So let's have our stack. In our stack, we're going to require children. So our first child is going to be a container. And we're going to need height and our height is going to be media query. So we're going to give it a height of 39%. And our width is going to cover the whole screen. So let's change this to width. And let's change this to width too and get rid of this. Down here, we're going to require a color. And our color is going to be gray with a shade of 300 and we require a child and our child is going to be a cache network image an image url we're going to to hook our product page with the data from the future builder so we are going to resolve this a little bit later so let's continue here we need our image to have a fit contain. So here we are going to use box fit. So we are done creating this image section. So what we are going to do, we need to have this positioned widget. And to the, to the right, we're going to give it a position of 20. And in a child here, we're going to require an icon. So we're going to use end design also, and we need to set a color. So down here, let's create another position widget for, for these dots that we have here. We need to utilize the bottom property. And from the bottom is going to be zero. Right is going to be zero. For this to be in the center, our right and left, like both of them, they have to be zero so that it can be positioned in the center. And the child that we're going to use is a row. And let's come back here on top. We need to give it a little bit of height. Here, our height is going to be 30%. So let's go to our row. We need to use main axis alignment. Our children has to be a list. So here, we need to set the length. So the length is going to come from the, the image list that we are going to have. So we are going to utilize padding. 
and our padding is going to be a gene sets dot symmetric in here we're going to use horizontal and our horizontal padding is going to be four and we're going to utilize the child property and our child is going to be a circle avatar in our circle avatar we have to utilize the radius so our circle has to be a little bit smaller so our radius should be five here and we need to give it a background color and our background color so let's just give it a background color colors dot gray let's create our provider and try to hook our our page to to a future builder so first let's go to our lib folder and go to our controllers and let's create a new file let's give it a name in here let's create a class and let's give it a name we're going to call it product notifier and it should extend a change notifier so our provider is going to be similar to main screen provider so in here we need to declare a private variable let's call it active page and the initial value is going to be zero and down here we need a getter so we need to get the the private variable and we need a setter and it's going to require an integer and in here we're going to set our active page to new index and we need to have the notify listener method down here so we are done creating our provider so next let's go to our main in our main dot dart let's come to our list of providers here let's try to hook it up so here we need the context and we need to put the name of our provider product notifier and now that we are done hooking our provider in our providers list let's go back to our products page so in here we need to wrap this custom scroll view so let's cut it from here so we need a consumer widget so our consumer is going to require an object of product notifier and don't forget to import the provider package so here let's paste our custom scroll view so first let's go to our page view builder and let's visit on page changed so here should be equal to the page and let's go down to the colors of our of our position widget here So here, if active page is not equal to index, that means it's an inactive index. So the color is gray, or we are going to pass a color of colors dot black. So next, we are going to to have our future builder so that we can have our data and then we can complete our page so you want to wrap this body widget in a future builder so what we are going to do i'm just going to wrap it in a builder and let's come to our home widget let's copy this future builder from here we are going to make a, some minor changes to it so that it can it can work in our product page so here we need one product so we are going to to have our model here we need to close this here the, the bracket so let's come down here and add another bracket our error is gone so next we need our future here so we need the data we need to declare two variables 
write it on top. So first we need a final string ID and we need final string category. So let's come down here. Let's just call it get shoes. So since we're getting data, we're pulling data from three different JSON files. Here, we need to, to use an if statement so that we can pull the right data. So if it is main shoes, we're going to pull main shoes. So here, let's call our help of get mail by ID. So in here, we need to pass our ID, our ID widget dot ID. And let's close it here. So here we need to create a late future and is of type sneaker. Okay, let's just call it man. Let's put in else if. Let's check our JSON file. Okay, this is the category. So I'm going to copy it from here. Let's check for the mail. So let's paste it here so that we won't have any problems. Uh, first, before we do anything, let's rename this to, to Snickers. Here, we're going to get female and our ID is equals to widget dot ID. Let's close it. And we do the same for, for the kids. And for the kids, we're not going to check. And down here, let's change this final to Snicker. So down here, let's remove the image and let's go up here. We need to change our item count here. So our item count has to come. From and in here, let's see, we have one error. Where is it coming from? It's coming from here. So down here, we do the same. Let's try to hook it up to one of our tiles. So let's go to our home page. Let's wrap it in a gesture detector. We need to navigate to our products page. So our ID is going to come from she.id and our category, we do the same. Let's try to restart our app. We forgot to initialize, so init state. Let's restart our application. It's working. Let's change the color of these icons to black and let's try to pull this position widget a little bit down. So let's go to our product page. Here, let's set a color. Let's set it to black. Here also. Let's look for this position widget. It's in this deck. Okay, it's here. So let's give it a height of 10% here. So next, we are going to work on the, the bottom part, the bottom part of our product page. Let's do one more thing. We need to, to pop context. So in our stack, after the last position widget, let's create another position widget. Let's utilize the bottom property and we are going to give it a bottom of 30 and we are going to have a clip rect here because we need to set the border radius. So here we are going to manipulate the top. So we need top left. We have to make it circular. Let's give it a radius of 30. Here it has to be radius. Here, let's change to top right. And we are going to require a child. And our child is going to be a container. And in our container, we need to utilize the height property. 
and down here we need to set a color and the color is going to be white and we need a child and our child is going to be a padding let's utilize the child property and our child is going to be a column in our column we need cross axis alignment let's pass the children and our first child is going to be a text okay uh, our position widget is in the wrong stack so we need to cut it from here we need to put it in our main stack which is this one here after the size box let's go to our column after our text we need to have a row widget and we need children our first child is going to be a text in our same row put a size box in this size box we have to utilize the width let's give it a width of 20. and right below the size box we need to have a rating bar builder our initial rating let's put it to 4. we need to allow half rating and let's set it to true item count let's set it to 5. item size let's set it to 22. we need item padding let's have symmetrical here we are going to utilize horizontal and we are going to give it a padding of one we need an item builder the item builder takes context and our context is going to be an icon So we have our rating here and it's working let's add const so that we can get rid of these errors so we are done with our rating bar let's close it underneath this row let's add a size box let's give it a height of 20 and let's have another row in this row we are going to utilize main axis alignment in our children we are going to take a text so first we need to put our price so we need to have another row in here in our children let's have a text first A little bit of space between the, the widgets that we are going to put in our row let's give it a width so after our row let's add a little bit of spacing so we need a size box after the size box let's have a column and in this column we're going to have children and the first child that we're going to have is a row in our row we are going to have children and our first child is going to be a text let's close this text here and we're going to need another text widget So here, let's have another size box. We need to space a little bit. So here, we're going to utilize height and we're going to give it a, let's give it a 10. And down here, we're going to have another size box. We're going to utilize height and we're going to give it a height of 40. So in this size box, we need to utilize the child property. And in our child property, we're going to have a list view builder. So in our list view builder, we need item count, but since we're using JSON data, we have to pass the data to a provider first so that we can 
have something like this whereby we can choose multiple sizes. For now, we cannot set data to, to JSON to a JSON file. So we need to set it in our providers. Then when we add to cut, we send the data from our provider to, to our cut. So here, let's just give it a random number. Let's give it three and let's give it a scroll direction. Here is going to be axis dot horizontal. Let's give it a padding and our padding is going to be agencies dot zero. So everything here is okay. So what we need to do, we need to go to our lib folder. Let's go to our controllers, product provider. In our product provider, we need to create a list dynamic. So here we're going to have a list dynamic. It has to be a private and here let's initialize it as an empty list. So next we need to have a getter method. So here we're getting our private dynamic list. We need a setter down here and it's going to require a list dynamic. And in our method, we have to set data to our private dynamic list. So here it will be equal to, to these new sizes. And we need to, to call the notify listener method down here. So here we need to create another function. In this function, we're going to use it to toggle selection of the item that we select, like here we have to change state of the item that we selected and leave others unselected. Same as that. So like we need multiple selections. So down here, we need to create, let's call it toggle check. And in here, it requires an integer of index. So in here, we have to use a for loop. So we have is selected key in our JSON file. So that's the one that we are going to use. It's a Boolean. So each and every time it's clicked, we need to set it to, we need to set it to true because initially it is, it is false. So we are done creating our provider here. We need to go to our home widget. In our home widget, we are not going to wrap our home widget in a consumer. So what we are going to do we need to call our provider here. Let's give it a name face. So I'm going to maintain the same name. So here we need a provider object. And our object that we're calling is product notifier. So we are going to use this product notifier to set the dynamic list in our provider. So let's come to our tile. So here in this gesture detector, we need to call our setter. So product notifier dot shoes sizes. Here it has to be equal to shoe dot sizes. See the changes. We are going to open our terminal. Let's call print here first. And we have to print from our provider. So this is our list. So if we click, we should be able to see our list here. So let's try. So here, our data is set in our provider. So let's go to our product page. First, let's get rid of this print statement over here. In our product page, I'm going to do one thing before we forget. So here, this button, when we close, we need to clear the list in our provider. So what we are going to do, 
we are going to call provide a notifier and this is our list and we need to clear the list each and every time that we go back otherwise it will keep on adding more data in the list so we cleared the list so now let's work on our list view builder so let's come down here in our list view builder we need to change the item count we have to change it to a product notifier shoe size is dot length and we need to set the scroll direction to axis dot horizontal and we need to add padding and the padding has to be edge inserts dot zero and down here we are retaining a choice chip in our choice chip we have some few properties that we need to add so the first property that we're going to add is shape and in here we need a border radius And our border radius has to be border radius dot circular and we are going to give it a value of 60. let's let's put our colors so first we have the disabled color if it is not selected we need to have a color for that it's supposed to be colors we have to call the product notifier we need the list and here we are going to access the index and in our index we need size let's add a little bit of style so our size is going to be 18 okay let's put colors dot black but the colors we have to differentiate the selected one and unselected one and we'll work on that a little bit later and here let's just put w600 500 will do okay selected so selected is a boolean is a boolean so we need to access a boolean from our list so here On selected we need to call our function so here we should pass okay let's just say new state here because we want to change the state of this boolean value so here we're going to call our product notifier and we're going to call the toggle checker so we need to make a few changes the reason why our selected index wasn't changing or showing that it was selected is because we forgot to add the notifier listener in our provider so let's go to our product provider and here after this for for loop we add the notifier and here most probably you have to change from index to i you have to change the index to i after that let's go back to our product page in our product page we need to add a padding to the choice chip and our padding is going to be symmetric and we have to add a horizontal of eight in our choice chip before we go to our choice chip here let's create a final variable and our final has to be product notifier shoe sizes index so that we won't have long lines of code in here so we change our text and then here our app style our color has to change so here all our colors are gray because nothing is selected if the index is selected then the text color has to change and the background color has to change so here our color changes from this gray to black so here we need to check size is selected if it is selected then the color is white if it is not then the color is black okay let's put black here not black 38 be black and if we select the text will change to 
to white. After this column, let's add a size box. Let's give it a height. We're going to give it a height of 10. Let's add a divider. So our divider has an indent of 10 and an end indent of 10. And we have to set a color. And the color of our divider, let's set it to black because it's not visible at the moment. Okay, our divider is showing. After our divider, let's add another size box. So we are going to copy this size box from here. Let's paste it here. And now let's add another size box. Let's give it a width. It's going to be 80%. Let's give it a child and our child is going to be text. And after the size box, let's add another size box. We want to give it a little bit of height. Let's add a text widget. Here is going to be text align dot justify. We have to set max lines to four. Let's change the color so it will be visible. Let's give it a black. Let's have another size box down here with a height of 10. After our size box, let's add alignment, bottom center. It retains a child, so our child has to be a padding. Let's use a gesture detector. In our gesture detector, we're going to use on tape function. Let's pass a child, and our child is going to be a padding. Our padding is going to be agencies.com. Here we have to call a child and our child is going to be a container. In this container, we have to give it a height and the height is going to be 50. And we have to give it a width and the width is going to utilize media query. Here we have to add a child and in our child we have to return a center widget. In our center we require a child and our child is going to be a text widget. Let's come up here. We need decoration. In our box decoration we need a color. And we need to add border radius. So we are done creating our button here, but we need to extract it because we need to reuse it. So let's come here and extract it. Let's give it a name. I'm going to call it checkout button. Let's cut it from here and create a new file for it. Let's go to our lib views in shared. Let's create a new file and let's call it checkout. Let's import the material package in here. Let's import the app style. So we need to replace this, let's just say label here. And we are going to pass it as our, our parameter. And here, our function, let's call it on tab. So let's create another one. Final string, we need our label here. So let's come to our product page. Let's import it. And we need to, to have our label. And our label is a string. Okay, let's just call it cart here. In here, we need the on tape function. So next, let's go and hook our hive in our main dot dot. So in our main dot dot up here, we need widgets flutter binding. So we need to create our box. Let's make it a sync here. So let's open our box. So let's give it a name. So our box is going to be a cut box. 
that's the first one so I'm going to create another one for the favorites but we cannot use our box in here so to use our box we have to to create a final instance of our box in here so let's come down here let's create a future so that we can create a function to add items to our cart so our box takes a map string so in here is going to be a string dynamic let's make it a sync so everything is okay here so let's come down to this button here add to cart okay the button is way down okay so before we do that we are going to add a few lines of code in our provider our product provider and here because what we need to do we need to send these sizes to to our card also so let's go to our provider okay so this is our provider we need to create a list string sizes and then we have to initialize it as an empty as an empty list and we need to create a getter and we have to create a setter these are the methods that we're going to create for for adding sizes so let's go back to our product page in our product page we have to check if sizes contains the size that we clicked here then we are going to remove that from the from the sizes list else we are going to add let me bring up my terminal terminal here so this size 6 is selected so it's added to our list if we click on it then our list here it should be removed from it should be removed from our list so if we click then it's added it's added and if we click then the sizes are removed so we need to send these sizes the selected sizes to to our cart so down here these are the lines the lines of code that we need to add to have to to achieve something like this so let's go to to our checkout button we need to create our cart so to create our cart here our on tip function has to be asynchronous and we have to to call create create cart so here we are going to have a map so in our map we are going to add the id id and our id is coming from sneaker dot id So let's make sure that here after we add to our cards we need to to clear the sizes list because if we don't we are going to be adding more sizes to the current list that we have so here let's access our sizes list and then we clear our list So after we add here, we just need to 
to pop context. So we're going to use navigator.pop context. to our views UI, let's create a new file. In here, let's create a stateful widget. Let's give it a name. Let's import the material package. Down here, let's retain a scaffold. In our scaffold, we need to utilize the body property. In our body, let's retain a padding. We're going to add a padding of 12 and we need to retain a child. And our child is going to be a stack. In our stack widget, we need children. So our first child is going to be a column. Our column is a cross axis alignment, cross axis alignment dot start. Let's retain children here. Our first child is going to be a size box. Let's give it a height. Let's give it a height of 40. After our size box, we need the gesture detector. In our gesture detector, we need on tail function. And let's retain a child. We need an icon. Let's give it a color. Colors.black. So here in our on tape function, we're going to pop context. So after our gesture detector, we need the text. Let's give it a style. Here it's going to be 65%. Let's have a child in here. So in our child, we are going to retain a list view builder. Item builder, we're going to need context and the index we need to retain something here we need item count let's just set a random number for now we need to give it a padding and padding is going to be agencies dot zero so in here we need to retain a padding So our padding is going to be agencies.all. We're going to require a child and our child is going to be a clip rect. Clip rect, we're going to require border radius. Here is going to be radius.secular and we're going to give it a radius of 12. In our clip rect, we need a child, and the child is going to be a slider ball. So first, let's try to import this slider ball. Most probably, you're going to face the same problem. So you can come to your terminal and run the command flutter pub get. Okay. And the lines of code for, for the slider balls so you need to to enter these lines for the slider balls so our slider ball requires a child so down here we're going to have a child and our child is going to be a container so this container is going to require a height our height is going to be 0 0.11 that's 11 percent and it's going to require a width so it's going to be 100 percent we need decoration box decoration you know box decoration 
we need a color we need gray gray and we need to give it a shade of 100 so our box shadow takes a list here takes a color let's give it a shade of 500 let's give it a spread radius of 5 and let's give it a blur a blur radius of 0 0.3 and let's give it an offset so our container has a child property and in our child we're going to utilize a row in our row we require children but first here let's add main axis alignment space between and in our children here we need another row and we need children the first child is going to be a padding let's give it a padding of 12. in here we are going to require a child and our child is going to be a cache network image here we're going to require width our width is going to be 70 and our height also is going to be 70 so it's a square and we need to utilize fit so we're going to use box fit dot fill so next we need to we need to add another padding down here we require a child and in our child we're going to return a column in our column we need main axis alignment we also need cross axis alignment let's have our children in our children our first child is going to be a text okay let's leave it like that since we don't have our data yet so let's give it a style let's have our cut box because we want to retrieve the data from from our box here we have to pass the name of our box let's import hive let's remove this cons from here Oh, in here we have to pass a key down here we have to create an item we want to put one item so we have to get the items from the card box we're going to return a map so first here we have key I've added a few lines of code so you can just complete adding these lines of code and down here you need to add to list and next you need to create a list a list dynamic and then we have to send our data to to this to this list here so we are going to initialize it as an empty list after we returned our items here we need to send the cut data to this list and we have to reverse the the index so that the last item that we add should come first so let's go down here we have our data so now here our item count is going to be card.length and we need to create a final in this instance i'm just going to call it data and it's going to be equal to cut index so in our container here so we are going to put data image url for for our image first and here our text is going to be name so for now our card is working we have a few lines of code that we need to add and then we are done so after this text we need to add a size box
Let's give it a height of 5. And down here, we need text. And in this text, we're going to pass a category. Let's give it a style. So let's add our price. We need another text widget. Let's give it a style here. Our size is going to be 18. We're going to give it a black color. We have to change our scaffold background color. So let's go to one of our pages. Okay, let's go to the main. Let's see. Here we have a background color. Let's copy this background color. Let's bring it to our page. And let's paste it in here. Let's put this text, the last text that we just written, let's put it in a row. First, we need a size box. We need to add a little bit of width so that we can have the space between the, the widgets. In our size box, we need a width. And our width is going to be, let's give it a width of 20. And down here, we need to paste We're going to copy this from here. Let's paste it here. Let's have size. Let's have 40 here. And we need to add another size box and give it a little bit of, of spacing. So to achieve a counter like design here, I've added a few lines of code. So you come up here, this, after this row, let's close it. After this row, we add another row. And in this row, we are going to require children. And we add a little bit of padding. And the padding that we are going to give is going to be agencies.all. And we are going to utilize the child property. And in our child, we have to put a decoration. And our decoration, we have color, we have border radius. And in our child, we are going to use a column so that we can have widgets on top of each other. So the first widget that we are going to have is going to be an inkwell. So here, you can either use an inkwell or a gesture detector. They work the same. Here, we need minus icon, the one that we have on top here. And we have to give it a color. And we need to add our quantity. So our quantity is here. Let's give it maybe a size of 14, 16. Yeah, 16 will do. So after adding our quantity, we need another gesture detector or inkwell down here. And we need to do the same. Just add an icon into it. So right at the bottom, we have to, we have to add a button to proceed to checkout. So we are going to utilize the button that we've used before. Let me try to add the code here. Here, we're going to utilize the child property. And in our child, we're going to take an alignment. In our alignment, let's utilize alignment. Alignment dot bottom center. We have to add another child. Down here, on our button, we have to remove the padding. Let's remove the padding and just add an alignment, put it to bottom center. And the child of the alignment, we have to utilize our custom button, the checkout button, and we have to put the label, proceed to checkout. So here, we need to, we need to test our hive storage. So what we are going to do, we are going to close the application and open it again. Let's hope it will bring the, the current version of the application. Okay, so our data is being stored in our hive. So we've made a few changes to our application. Let's take a look at them before we start working. So 
on our bottom navigation bar we've added an icon on the second index the favorites icon so if we click on it we are redirected to my favorites page and in my favorites page we have a list of our favorite products and in this page you are able to delete from your list and here here on the favorites icon we should be able to add to our favorites list and we should be able to visit my favorite page and delete also the state of my favorite is supposed to be passed to the product page so if we click on a product the state should be passed to this page and this product should be on my favorite list also and if we click here we should be able to visit this page and delete it and as for our cart we need to remove the slider so that we can have the ability to delete the product from the cart so here i've added an extra icon whereby if you click you are able to delete the product from your cart and it's removed from our hive storage so now let's work on our app so to make necessary changes we have to start by changing this icon here on our bottom navigation bar so let's come down here index 2 so our first icon is going to be and our second icon is going to come from this same font family so I'm just going to copy from here yet I'm going to paste it here and it has to be a circle outline so next let's create favorites page let's come to our UI create a new file and call it favorites and in this page we are going to have a stateful widget and let's give it a name let's import the material package and down here we're just going to pass a scaffold Let's have a body. So first, we're going to just put a center, a child and a text, and then we work on it later. Let's add a little bit of style. Let's give it a size of 40 and a color. So after creating this page, we need to come to main screen. And in our main screen, we need to hook the page up here in our page list. So let's add a const here. Let's go to our lib, visit views, shared, and let's open our product card. So in our product card, first here on top, we need to call our box. So our box is going to be fav box. And in here, we have to pass the name of our box. And let's close it here so the first method that we're going to create is create fav so it's going to be a future void and let's give it a name so it's going to be asynchronous so here we are going to await our fav box And we are going to add so it's a future so next let's create our get favorites so in our get favorites we're going to require a final So here we are going to get the key and we are going to return our item. So our item is going to be a map. So in this map we are going to require a key and an ID. So we have to make it to list And then we close it here so down here we need to go to our models and create a new file and call it constants so in our constants we need two list dynamic the one with the name favor other one with the name ids so let's go back to our product card so in our product card let's have here is equals to fav data dot to list and down here we need to get the IDs 
and we need to close it here. We need to call this method in create favorites. So we're going to call it here. So each and every time that we are going to create favorites, we are going to get favorites after we create it. So now let's go to our gesture detector, the one wrapping this favorite icon here. So this is our gesture detector. In our gesture detector, we need to check dot contain the widget.id. So if the ID is in our list, we are going to navigate to our favorites page so that we can delete the product from there. We need to close it here. So here we need an else statement. So in our else statement, we are going to create. So we need to call our method in here. And our method requires a map. So in this map, we are going to require an ID. And our ID is going to be widget.id. We're also going to require a name. And the name is coming from the widget.name. Same as our category. Let's have our price and we need our image. So down here, we need to check also. So it's IDs.contains widget.id. Then our icon is going to be a heart, else it's going to be a heart all. So let's add const and format our code. So in our get favorites method here, after setting the IDs, we need to call set state. So let's visit a product that hasn't been added to our favorites yet. Now it's responsive. So next let's work on our product page and do the same. So let's go to our lib folder views and let's go to our product page first we need to call our box so we have to write this code here and we need those two methods so we are going to go to our product card and from our product card let's copy these two methods that we created and paste them down here Let's go to gesture detector. So this is our gesture detector. So in our gesture detector, we need to check first. If ID contains widget.id, then we need to do something. So here we're going to push a favorites page. Let's close it here else we want to create so in here we require a map and let's close here so when we are creating we need id and our id here is going to be different it's not going to be widget.id so we are going to get our id from this instance of snakers snakers.id and it's followed by name our name is snicker.name our category is snicker.category price and we need an image here our image url is a list dynamic so we need to access that list dynamic and get one image so we are just going to get the first image from that list so we are done creating let's save let's add cons here so let's go to a product which is not in our favorites list and if we click here the results should be the same as the ones that we attain in our product tile. And if we click again, then we are sent to the favorites page. So in this section, we're going to work on the my favorites page. So now let's go to favorites page. In favorites page, 
we need to call the instance of our box and let's pass the name of our box in here let's import hive package so next we need to create the delete method So our delete method is going to require a key and our key is an integer. And we are going to await our box. And we are going to call the delete method. Since we are awaiting, this method has to be asynchronous. So we are done creating our delete method. So next, we are going to work on the UI part of our favorites page. What we need to do, we need to get rid of this center widget. Let's pass a size box. Let's give it a height. And the height is going to occupy the whole screen. And it's going to require a child. And our child is going to be a stack widget. And in our stack, we require children. And our first child is going to be a container. So in our container, we need to pass the design. So what we are going to do, we are going to go to our home page. And we are going to visit this container. The first child of this stack. And we are going to copy this code from here. And let's go to our favorite page and we are going to paste it in this container. Before we save our changes, let's pass a width. And our width has to be the whole screen. So our design is working fine. So in here, after our build context, we need to get our items from our box. And let's create a list dynamic. Let's give it a name. And initially it's going to be an empty list. We need to access our box. And in here we need to pass a key. We need another final. And let's give it a name item and is equals to our faith box dot get key. And we need to close it. And down here we need to return our map. So here is going to be a map. Let's close it down here. In here, we are going to get everything that we send to our favorite box. Each and every item has a key, ID, category, name, image, URL, and price. We need to return them all. It's different from getting the IDs so that we can just make changes to the UI. So let's get everything. So first we need a key. And our key is equals to key. We need ID. And our ID is equals to item ID. Category. Is equals to item category. Price. price and we need image URL and down here we have to make it a list 
so we need to make this fev into a public not a private down here we need to set data we need this list reversed because we want the last item that we send to our list to be the first on our list when we open our favorites so now we have our data we can work on our ui in our container here we need to return a child and our child is going to be a padding widget the padding comes with the padding and our padding is going to be agencies.all and we're going to give it a padding of eight and let's utilize the child property and our child is going to be a text let's give it a name let's add a little bit of style and in our style we're going to utilize app style let's give it a size of 36 and let's give it a color of color black and let's make it bold let's change the color to white here and let's give this container a width and it's going to take up the whole screen let's remove the 04 from here or oh, let's make it 40 here so next in our stack widget we need to add another child and our next child is going to be a padding widget so let's give it a padding of agencies let's give it a padding of agencies dot all and our value is going to be eight let's add a child our child is going to be a list view builder so here our item count is going to be five dot length here it's supposed to be a child and let's give it a padding from the top we're going to give it a padding of 100 and we're going to add const over here before we return our widget we need to make a final let's call it shoe so in here we are going to return a padding widget so here is going to be agencies.all and we are going to give it a padding of 8 let's have our child and our child is going to be a clip rect in our clip rect we are going to utilize the border radius property here it's going to be dot secular and we are going to give it a value of 12 let's return a child our child is going to be a container and our container should have height and our height is going to be 11 percent so let's use media query and let's give it a width and the width is going to be media query So we need decoration. Let's have our box decoration. In our box decoration, we need a color. So our color is going to be gray with a shade of 100. We need box shadow. Box shadow retains a list. And in this list, we need box shadow. In our box shadow, we need a color so our color is going to be a gray color with a shade of 500 let's give it a radius of 5 here let's give it a blur radius of 0 0.3 let's give it an offset and in this container we need a child so our first child is going to be a row widget in this row we require children our first child is going to be a row widget 
so first let's come here in our first row we need to utilize main axis alignment so it's going to be main axis alignment space between let's go to our other row we need children so our first child is going to be a padding widget and for padding we need agencies dot all and we are going to give it a padding of 12. Let's utilize the child property. And our child is going to be a cage network image. So our image is coming from the data that we just retrieved. So here we are going to call the shoe instance, shoe image URL. So next, let's have a width, a width and a height. So we have a width, we are going to give it a width of 70. And we're going to give it a height of 70 also. We also need to utilize the fit property. And down here, we're going to have boxfit.fill. So after our padding, we need another padding. So in this one, we're going to use agencies.only. We are going to manipulate top and the top we're going to give it a 12 and we're going to manipulate the left side and in the left side we're going to give it a 20. We need to utilize a child property so our child is going to be a column and in our column we need in our column we need cross axis alignment. Let's pass our children our first child is going to be a text widget. So our text is going to come from our shoe and it's going to be a name. Let's go up. Okay, it seems like we forgot to include a name here. So let's have name. Let's get the name here. Let's restart our application. Our name, we should give it a style. So our style, we're going to utilize app style. Let's bring it down. We're going to give it a font size of 16. Our color is going to be colors.black. And our font weight is going to be bold. So in our column, we need to space our widget. So we need a size box. Let's give it a height. And we are going to give it a height of five. After the size box, we need another text widget. And in this text widget, we're going to have our category. Let's give it a style. Let's give it a size of 14. And let's give it a color. For color, we're going to go with gray. Font weight, we're going to go with W600. Let's add another size box. After the size box, we need a row. Let's give our size box height, and the height is going to be five. In our row, we need to have main axis alignment, and our main axis alignment is going to be space between. Let's have our children in here. So our first child is going to be a text widget, and we need to pass the price. Let's have a dollar sign on our price. Let's style to our text. So here we're going to utilize our app style. First, let's add a comma here. Let's bring it down. So we're going to give it a size of 18 and we're going to give it a color black and we're going to make it bold. So let's close this row. We need another padding in here. So in here, we're going to give it a padding of agencies.all and we're going to pass a value 8. We need to utilize the child property and our child is going to be a gesture detector. And our gesture detector, we're going to utilize the on tap function and we need to use the child. In our child, we need an icon. We're going to use Eon icons and we're going to utilize this icon. Let's add a cons here. So in here, we need to delete. So first, let's call our method. 
and we need to pass the key. Our key is coming from our shoe. So now we can delete and the next thing that we need to do, we need to go to our IDs and we need to, let's import IDs here. And we need to navigate. So we need to go to our main screen. And let's try and see whether it's working or not. So it's working fine. So let's just delete everything so that we can have a fresh list. So our list is empty. Let's add one item. Let's go to our favorites and it's in there so we need to delete it if we come to our home then it's removed from our ids list so let's try to do it from our product page so in our product page we add if we try to add again then we are sent to our favorites list and then from here we can just delete and if we revisit the item then it is deleted from our ids So next we are going to hook providers to all these functions. So now that we're done creating our methods and they are functional, we need to hook them to provider. And to do that, we need to come to our lib folder controllers and we have to create a new file and we have to give it a name, favorites provider. And in this file, we're going to have a class and we're going to call it favorites notifier and it's going to extend change notifier and in this class we have two lists and they are list dynamics so the first list is going to be of ids initially it's going to be an empty list second we are going to have the one for favorites and initially it's going to be an empty list too what we need to do now we need to create getters so here we need our data type and our data type is list dynamic and we're going to get IDs from our private variables of IDs. That's our first getter. And let's have our setter. We have our data type in here. It's list dynamic. And let's give it a name. Here's going to be new IDs. And in this method, we want to set our IDs to new IDs. And down here, we need to call the notifier listener. So we are done creating for the first one. To create for the second one, we just need to copy these getters and setters, and we need to paste, and we need to rename. So the first one is going to be favorites. And here, we need to get private instance of the list and here on our setter we need a name here let's call it new fav it has to be private and here we are setting new fav and we need a notifier so let's go to our product page and try to, before we go to our product page, let's hook it up to our main dot dart. In our main dot dart, we need to hook our provider. So we come to our providers list. Here we are going to have a change notifier provider and we are going to pass our favorites provider. So coming down here in our product page. So first here, you know, get method, cut it from here and we are going to put it in our provider. So in here, we need the instance of our box. So we come up here, we're going to have a final fav box and we need to put the name of our box. Our box is fav box. 
let's import hive in here we need our favorites and our ids are going to be our instance of ids in this provider and we need to change this favor to to favorites and we need to remove this line of code from here And we go to our product page. Let's remove this from here. So in our product page, we need to go to the to the gesture detector, wrapping this icon here. Okay, so this is our gesture detector. We need to wrap it in a consumer widget. And this consumer widget is going to consume a favorites notifier object. And we have our name here. So in here, we are going to check if favorites notifier.ids contains widget.id, we are going to push to favorites page. Else we need to create. Down here, after creating, we need to set state. So we just call set state here. And then we save. Let me restart the application. So let's go to our product page. It seems like it's not working. Our problem is we didn't change down here. So on our icons, we also need to utilize our provider. Let's call our get favorites method. Here we need to pass the context and we need to consume the favorites notifier object. Let's set listen to true. So down here we need to use our favorites notifier to get favorites here. So now our icon is showing Let's go to our favorites and try to delete everything from here. Let's go back. So now if we click, our UI is responsive. We delete. Our UI is responding. So next, we are going to do the same for our product tile. Before we do the same for the product card, we need to move our we create favorite to our provider so we are going to cut it from here and we go to our provider and then we are going to paste it here and down here we need to remove the underscore and we need to save it let's go back to our product page in our product page let's visit our error so our error is here so here we need favorites notifier dot create so let's try and see whether it's working or not to create our product from from our provider so let's come to the page we create and it's working fine and here we can delete we come back the state is set so what we need to do now we need to work on the product card so first we don't need these methods here anymore so what we are going to do we are just going to delete them and we are going to access our methods using provider so to use providers i'm going to get the provider so our provider is favorites notifier and here we need to consume of our favorites notifier So first what we need to do, we need to get our favorites. So here we are going to call our favorites notifier and then we get our method. Next what we need to do, we need to come to our gesture detector, this gesture detector here. We need to check whether the ID is in our IDs list. Next we need to have this method to come from our provider.
and here we also need to do the same we need to access our provider so that's all let's try and see whether it's working or not it seems like the ui is not responding so let's come down here after we set let's set state let's remove these products here now it's working if we set it here and it's set on our product page we can either delete from our product page or delete from our tile so let's try both first and then we delete we set it here and it's set in our product page and we delete so now let's go to lib folder views and let's go to ui and let's visit our favorites from favorites we want to remove this code from here so let's just cut it from here and let's go to our favorites provider in our provider we need to create a new method let's call it get all data let's paste the code in here let's delete this list dynamic from here and let's create a private list dynamic on top and we are going to call it fev so we need to create getters and setters for our list dynamic. So let's just copy one of the methods that we have and just rename it. So after renaming our methods, let's go to our get all data. In our get all data, we have to add an underscore. After adding the underscore, let's go ahead and hook our get all data in our favorites to access our provider so the name of our provider is favorites notifier so here we need to import provider package and we need to access the object and the object is favorites notifier and let's close it here so down here we need to access our get all data And let's come to our list view builder. In our list view builder, our data is now coming from provider. So what we need to do, so we need favorites notifier, fav.length, and we do the same here. So let's try to restart our application. Let's try to visit our favorites. Let's delete the product that we have. Let's add a new product and our provider is working. So let's just try to add it from the inside. Our provider is working. Now let's move this delete favorites method to our provider. Let's remove the underscore. Let's make it a future. Let's come back to our favorites page. First, let's remove this box from here. And down here, our IDs are coming from our provider. So we need, we need to do the same. So our provider is working fine and it's deleting. So we are done with our provider, our favorites provider. So let's clear the code up here. Next, we are going to hook our cart to a provider. So let's view our cart provider and see what it looks like. So here we don't have much. 
So we have to create the getters and setters for the cart before we use our provider in our cart page. We need to use providers to call Hive and to get all the products from Hive. So first here, we have this method here, get cart. So I'm going to cut it from here. Let's go to our lib folder, controllers. Let's go to our cart provider and I'm going to paste it in here. So we need to create a new list dynamic on top. Let's have our getters and setters. So for our getters, we need to have the data type first. So our data type is going to be list dynamic. Here we need to get cards from the private variable that we have. And for our setter, we need to set cards. And in here, we have to set the data type and our data type is a list dynamic also. And we have to give it a name. So here, let's call it a new card. And in our method, let's set card to new card. And we have to call the notifier listener method down here. So we are done. Let's go to our get card. In our get card, we need to replace this card with our private card on top. So let's go to our card page. In our card page, comment out the init state. Let's remove these lines of code from here. Let's keep the box for, for now. Here on top, we have our card provider. We need to access the get card method. So we'll call our card provider and get card. And in our list view builder, we don't need these cards over here. We have to access the one in our provider. So we are going to have card provider here. Card provider dot card dot length. And down here, we do the same. So let's delete this product from here. Let's visit a random product. Let's add it to cart. And it's working. So let's do the same. Let's move our delete method from here to our provider. So let's go back. Let's try to remove everything here. So we need to replace our delete method with the one that we have in our provider. So here we need to, to access our provider. So our provider is cut provider delete card. So let's try to restart our application and come back and try to delete the product that we have. So our delete method is working. Since we had sliders first, here in our cart, the change that we made, we just removed the slider. So to have this delete icon here, right at the bottom, we have to come to our container. We have a row and we have another row. In this row, we need to create a stack. And in this stack widget, we have our image. And in our stack, after our first child, we are going to have a positioned widget. And this position widget is going to be our delete icon here. First, we create a gesture detector. We use the onTap function. In our onTap function, we are going to call our provider and our delete method. After calling our delete method, we need to navigate to the main screen. The child of this position widget is going to be a container and it's going to have a width of 40, a height of 30, and we have to put decoration. In our decoration, our color is black 
and we have to put border radius here on the top right we have to put radius dot circular and we have to set it to 12 and we need to have an icon and our icon is coming from the end design font and the name is delete we set the size to 20 and we set the color to white We want to move these methods to our product provider so first what we are going to do we are going to cut them from here and we are going to go to our lib folder let's go to our controllers and let's go to our product provider in our product provider let's paste the code and let's change these variables from private to public let's go to our our home page in our home page let's remove lines of code from here we need an instance of our provider here i'm just going to copy the provider that we have and i'm going to change the object that we're consuming we are going to consume product notifier and let's give it a name product notifier so in here we are going to call our methods so the first one we are going to get male next we are going to get female and last we get kids after invoking our methods here we need to come to home widget and we need to call from our product notifier so here is going to be male and we need to do the same for the other two so let's get rid of this code from here so let's restart our application and see whether it's working or not so coming here our products are loading and everything is working fine so our providers are working to get data from our helper class so next we are going to try to do the same for the product page in our product page we are calling in its state to get the data we need to have the methods in our provider then we can get the data from our provider so let's visit our product page we want to call this method from our provider we are going to cut this code from here and let's go to our lib folder let's go to our controllers and in product provider let's paste the code here let's cut this from here and let's paste it here and call it sneakers remove the underscore so first what we need to do we just need category and here we need id and here is going to be sneakers our category should be required when we call our method it's a string and let's give it a name category and we need another string with the name id we are done with our provider so let's go back to our product page in our product page let's remove this code from here we need to access our product notifier we need our product notifier after our, our build context so let's uncomment this code here next we need to call the method product notifier get shoes and our category is going to come from our widget dot category so here we have the the string that is being passed from our product tile and we have the id is being passed from our product tile also so we are going to use these two and send them to our method and in our method then it will determine which product to get so down here on our future we need to use instance of sneaker that we have in our in our provider so we are going to call product notifier dot sneakers let's restart our application to see whether the changes are working or not so we come to our product we click our product and everything is working fine so this is how we can call a method from from our provider let's visit our product by cart if we click here we have our product by cart so we want to make the same changes that we made in our home page to our product by cart product by cart is calling the same methods that we are calling on our home page so what we need to do we just need to delete this code from here oh the init state we need it to initialize our our tab controller so we don't need these three methods from here we don't need to initialize them we just need to remove this from here 
and down here after our build context let's call our, our product notifier so here we want to consume product notifier and let's pass the context in here let's import provider so we want to call our three methods here and let's go to our widgets so in our widget we need to access the instance that we have in our product notifier so let's restart our application and try to run a test so here everything is working fine and if we click we are redirected to the product So here we have two simulators, the one for the iPhone 12 Pro Max and the one for the iPhone 12 Pro. So we want to make changes to make our application adaptive to any kind of device. This is the same application and we don't have any overflows in both devices. If we click here, we go to our products. We don't have any overlays. If we visit our favorites, we don't have any overlays. We can do the same for this page it's responsive we can visit our favorites it's the same go to our cart it's the same so our application is fully responsive to achieve this kind of design we need to add one dependency so let's go to our pub spec yamo so we need to add flutter screen utils after adding flutter screen utils then we go to our main dot dart in our main dot dart we need to wrap our material app with screen util in it and then we need to set the design size to 375 by 812 so this is the width and this is the height mean text adapt we set it to true split screen mode we set it to true we are going to make because at first we were using media query the changes that we are making to make our ui responsive don't require us to use media query so if we visit our main screen and visit our home page the size box that we have at first we set media query to maximum height and we set the width to maximum width so we need to replace height with our height that we've set in our screen utils which is 812 and we need to add dot h for our width we do the same 375 dot w and here in our container instead of using media query also we are going to use this figure 325.h and we are going to make the same changes to our padding so that it will be adaptive so here we have our left padding which is set to 16 so left is on the width we set 16.w and we have our top our top is a property of our height so we set it to 45.h same here we have our width we are going to change it to 375.w same as for our padding so all the paddings and the width all the paddings and the height width in the application we are going to change them so i'm not going to do everything but i'm just going to show you we are going to change our text because we need our text to be adaptive text is a little bit difficult to deal with when you are going from one device to another so we need to make our text adaptive also so what we are going to do first we are going to create a reusable widget that we are going to to use across our application so our reusable widget it requires a string and it requires textile so here we have our text and this is the text for example our title here we have max lines so max lines we should set to one overflow overflow dot fade text align text align dot left soft wrap it should be false and our style is going to be our text style here so we need to add one more property to our font size so that property is set in our our textile object so let's go back to our home page so here we use our reusable text widget and we have our app style so let's visit our app style and see 
what kind of changes we need to make to make our text adaptive. So in our textile, it requires size. So we need to add a property from Screen Utils by the name SP. So we are going to set our size, then we put dot SP. Same as for app style, we come to our size, then we just put dot SP. So that's all for the text. So back to our home page, most of the text we have replaced with our reusable text. Our padding here, we have set it to 203.h and our container padding, we've set it to 12.w. So if there's a padding, if it is left, you put .w, if it is right, .w, if it is top, .h, if it is bottom, .h. So let's visit our, our home widget. In our home widget, we did the same. The size box, we changed the height from media query to 325.h and we come down, visit this column first. We have our padding. We added our screen utils to our padding and we've changed the text. This text here, we're using our reusable widget. And down here, this text also, we are going to use our reusable widget. And for the size of our icons, we are going to do the same. If the size is 18, it's 18 dot edge. So we have this size box here, the size box for this list view. So we have set the size to 99 dot edge. And this size box has another widget, this widget here. So we did the same height 100 dot edge width. And for our border radius, we do the same if it is 16, 20, 18, we are going to add dot edge to our border radius. So let's go back to our home widget. We have another widget we didn't visit, which is our product tile. In our product tile, our container, we changed the height to 325 dot edge and we changed the width to 225 dot W. Same as for our padding here on top, we just added the, the properties. So in our column, stack, container in our container we've set the height to 186.h and our positioned widget so positioned widget requires size also so here right is going to be dot w from the top is going to be dot h since it's the height our padding we've done the same so for these ones, we didn't use our reusable widget, but we can do the same. So let's change this to our reusable widget. So let's save it. Nothing changed since the properties that we set were the same. So down here, let's do the same. So that's all. So from our product card, let's visit our product by cart. In our product by cart, we changed the container properties. First, we have our, our padding left and top. And our height, we set it to 325 dot H. And we have our, our other padding widget here. Let's visit our lettuce shoes. In our lettuce shoes, here on our stagger tile, the first height that we're going to have, the height of the larger tile here is going to be 285.h and the smaller one is going to be 252.h. And our stagger tile, in our stagger tile, we did the same change the height here to 75.h, use a reusable text widget, and that's all for this widget. Next, let's go to our product page. In our product page, let's have our dot h here, and we need to remove the cons. Our size box, we change the height, this size box, first child of the stack in our flexible space, the height to 401.h, the width 375 w. Then we have another stack here. In this container, we've set the height to 316. 
So the easiest way, if you have the code, you can just get a calculator. If the media query was 0 0.4, you can just multiply 0 0.4 times 812. Then you can get the height for, for this widget here. If the media query was maximum was 100%, then you just put 375, our height here. I'm not going to introduce everything. So like you have the formula to calculate the height so you can go through the, the code and change everything from media query to use screen your tools. Since you have the percentages, you can just calculate. Okay. If it is 0 0.4, 0 0.4 times 812, then you get your height, you write your height and you put dot H, then you're good to go. So that's all. So next, let's try to make our code a little bit clean. So what we are going to do in our shared, we are going to create a new file. Let's call it export.dart. So in our product page, so let's just take everything from here, except for the, for the packages. Let's leave out the packages. Let's, we cut them from here. We go to our export page. We paste them here. So here, we're just going to write export. So what we need to do in this page here, we need to come down here and instead of getting the model from the original source, we are going to get it from our export, export.dart. So it will bring everything that we put in this page. So here, now we have a few things so we can create another one for, for packages. So here in our shared, let's create a new file. Uh, let's call it export packages. So we have our packages here that we are going to use. We are going to paste them in here and we are going to export them. So now on top, we only have two files instead of having a lot of code here. So this is for our product page. So we need to go to all our pages and try to, to have as a little code on top here as possible. 